Right, okay, so I did say that I wouldn't be making another video regarding the Jay Slater missing persons case. But due to the constant flow of constant conspiracy theories coming out regarding Jay Slater's disappearance, I wanted to give my thoughts as well as my opinions about some of the things that are being said. As I understand that people have questions or questioning about some things regarding the case, but they are snowballing this into something that necessarily it might not even be. So I've seen a few videos online regarding the Jay Slater case being a cover-up. The disappearance is all to do with his friends, his friends are apparently lying, so on and forth. If it's not the friends that are lying, it's the last two known individuals to have been with him. Now, I personally have spoken to the last known individual to have been with Jay Slater. I'm gonna keep it private. My thoughts still remain the same as when I released my video last Friday on my thoughts of what happened to Jay Slater. As in the video, I stated that due to the island's conditions, the whereabouts of his last known ping, it was more than likely that he'd potentially fallen into a chasm or off a serious hype, which then just three days later is exactly what was said about Jay Slater his body after they discovered it. Multiple people have questioned how on earth did they retrieve Jay Slater's fingerprints 29 days after his disappearance, or after the time in which he was potentially deceased. Now, a lot of people don't really understand this one. Luckily for me though, I know an individual that works directly in this department, and I know what it is that they would have done in order to retrieve Jay Slater's fingerprints. Now, there was a study that was published roughly in 2016. It was also published again in USA Today in 2017, in which they stated that you can retrieve fingerprints from a body in wintertime conditions of up to 50 days. In warm weather conditions, they stated that you can retrieve fingerprints from a deceased person up to just four days. Now, a lot of people saw that and they were like, oh my God, Jay Slater was found 29 days later in humid conditions, so on and forth. Now, without going into too much detail, it's hard to assume the weather or the temperature in the area in which Jay was found, whether or not he was found under vegetation or in a spot that was like heavily shaded, depends where the sun sits on the island, depends on the wind and how it flowed for at nighttime, depending on the humidity of how that would have stayed throughout the day. People just think that it was 24 seven humidity, probably wasn't, there's loads of other factors to that, don't wanna to get too much into it, I wanna just roll on about the rest of it. So realistically, the long and short is, it wouldn't have been humid 24 seven, depending on the clouds and if they've trapped the heat of the atmosphere. Like for example, in the desert, boiling hot in the day, freezing cold at night, it could be boiling hot in the area in which Jay is in, but if he's in a very shaded spot that's not really that humid and is also like protected by wind, these could just be elemental factors that obviously help towards retrieving his fingerprints later on. But let's just say that these fingerprints would only last up to four days. How would they retrieve them in the first place? The thing is about this one is that it's not really nice to explain. It's not a nice procedure and how they retrieve his fingerprints. Quite simply put, if he was in a mummified or like a severely dried state, they would remove the fingers from the hands. And then what they would try and do is they would then using whatever they use, they would actually soak the fingers and try to rehydrate them basically. If they can rehydrate them enough to a certain point, they then will then roll them in ink and then roll them for a print. But then again, if the fingers are still like too deteriorated or they're not getting what they need from that, what they can also do is then de-glove the finger. Do not look that up on Google, but they can basically de-glove the finger where they remove the skin from the finger. Again, a rehydration process then takes place. And then what they have is they have like a prosthetic hand or they have a glove of their own. So they'll have a hand like that. And then what they do is they then take the de-glove finger, they attach that to the prosthetic. They then roll that in a print and match it to the fingerprints. Because of the autopsy or the condition of the body, you know, sending off his DNA to a third party or a third party lab, like obtaining his DNA from his clothing due to the fall, so on and forth, um, and then obtaining his family's DNA, it would have just taken a lot longer to have confirmed his body or a bit more time. If they have what they have in front of them, where they feel like they're in a position where they could potentially do the exact procedure that I just said, that's then how they would retrieve this individual's fingerprints. Now, another huge thing that's being stated and being said is a lot of content creators are actually questioning whether or not this is even Jay Slater's body. The main thing that they've actually attached them to here is the fact that Jay Slater's mum has not been able to see the body. Now, I'm just unsure if people are even unaware about this or they just don't have knowledge in it. It's like really tough to explain. Dependent on the condition of the body, right? It's kind of like dependent on whether the individuals can see it. It's not an all the time thing. I do agree. It's not something that happens all the time. It kind of comes down to like the recommendation of individuals. It's a really horrific thing. So it comes down to like a recommendation from the individuals that are dealing with the body, you know, dependent on the state of it, they're claiming that this individual has fallen into a chasm or from like a great height. They're saying that his death is caused by that. And because of that, you can probably take into accountability that the individual's body is 
in such a contorted or configured state. People almost imagine, like one of the things I find really hard, there's an author I speak to over at Washington State. He's also a professor in sociology and psychology. And it's kind of really interesting because I don't think what a lot of people understand is, I think they have this like movie type syndrome where people's imagination of how the body should be or how the body should look comes down to basically depiction of how they see things in movies or films. Like in a lot of films and a lot of movies, obviously after a murder or a certain thing takes place, they always go in and the body's like in a position of shock. It's meant to shock the person that's seeing it. They don't really go in and understand that if an individual's attacked or in a certain position, they're more than likely going to be completely cramped up into the fetal position. You know, they've been defending themselves. They're not just going to be like sprawled out, laying there with everything like showing, you know, all the indications of wounds showing immediately. Take the Idaho 4 case, like a massive misconception in that is the fact that all four of the individuals in the Idaho 4 case were stabbed to death with a k-bar knife that is that is fact that is known but what people really misconstrue is that one of the officer's statements regarding a PTA he states that when he sees the first two individuals it's later confirmed that they were deceased from knife wounds right he then states that he goes upstairs and visibly to him he can see that the next two individuals were clearly killed by a sharp object now one of the things that people are like is they're like did he change knives did he do this did he do that there's loads of things and theories that they think the thing is though is that no it would have been the visibility to the officer so when he walks in the room the individual could have been underneath the bed sheet and it could have been visible to him that the other person was obviously visibly stabbed but they could have been wearing clothing whereas when he went upstairs the two individuals that he then saw could have either been in a lot less clothing for example, like not wearing their pajamas, not, you know, so on and forth. And it would have been skin visible to him that would have shown him the wounds. And because of that, people have ran with this wild conspiracy. That it's like, they feel like the guy that went in there is somewhat of an octopus and had one K bar in his hand and then just like an array of different knives in every other one of his eight arms. It's like, no, they just don't really understand the context in which the PCA is being explained to them because the probable cause affidavit is a reasoning and why they're apprehending an individual from Pennsylvania and not the evidence and actual reasoning in why they need to question him because they keep that a lot closer to the chest. That was just a PCA, a probable cause affidavit, something of why they probably need him to come and speak to them. And since then, he's been inside for 18 months and his trial is in 2025, where he's continuously battered going to trial as the prosecution hold a substantial amount of evidence against him. Going really off topic there, but you can literally just see from me explaining that, things really snowball from very, very small descriptions. But regarding Jason, Slater's mother not seeing the body. They can, I'm pretty sure that they can insist in seeing his body, but due to the condition in his body, it's probably been heavily advised by them that no, they don't think the individuals should be seeing Jay's body. Dependent on the amount of broken bones he has, the fact that if they've degloved his fingers or removed his fingers for his fingerprints, the amount of things that his mother does not need to see is pretty much at this state being heavily advised. She can insist and she can probably pay third party and actually go into seeing his body. Over in the UK, you have to sign a waiver that basically states if I want to see this body it's down to me if this impacts my mental health and not the funeral services for allowing me to see the body that's why you're signing a waiver you're literally saying like I'm putting my mental health on the line here that is down to me that is not down to them for letting me see the body right you know it's better to and I would sometimes advise that the best advice is to remember them as the last time that you saw them you know in that happier more natural light yeah as opposed to like viewing the body it's, it just really isn't easy it's completely down to the individual just personally for me and if I was someone that was viewing his body and it was in a certain position or a certain state yeah I, I too would be heavily advising no don't do this people think that because of this there's a cover-up like is it his body is it not his body they've literally matched his fingerprints his fingerprints were taken over in the UK they would have been able to have accessed those records from years ago from his previous offense and they've matched the fingerprints the people are like oh, oh is it even his body is it this is it that but they're just saying like look I advice is that it's a lot healthier for you to not see the body. Like, I completely get it. Like, I do get it. It is a rare occurrence, but it does also happen. Not just for cases like this. It could be for, like, a motorcycle accident. It could be for, like, multiple different reasons. But a cover-up really is a wild assumption to immediately jump to. So next I want to talk about the video that's come out from a local Tenerife resident, as he thinks in his account that everything does not add up. And I just want to have a little listen to it. I just want to go through some of it and give my thoughts on it as well. Now, I work for a pretty well-known water sports company. We do excursions, hire of jet skis, all that kind of stuff. We're easy to find. We work a lot with the Coast Guard here 
they kind of um they kind of keep us legal they're good people to know this is a really weird thing at the start kind of like i'm not this individual I, I don't do true crime i don't do this i have no reason for this but i also work for a water sports company that's very well known and is clearly evident and easy to find around the island like come on did everyone not watch what happened in baby reindeer it literally took about 20 minutes to locate those tweets and get hurt like that you've just narrowed down exactly or potentially who you are off bat Thomas tip off had been received in relation to the ongoing search for the missing persons case, which is obviously Jay Slater. I don't know um, what form this was, whether it was a shady phone call or a letter or an email. I have no idea what format it was you know, received in by whoever it was, was, was received by. Right, this can be really easily misconstrued if I'm trying to understand what he's saying here. I think he's saying that there was a tip-off that came in, basically on the Saturday, something to do with Jay Slater's body. Right, this is where things get really out of hand. Do you remember when you were at school and there's like 30 of you sitting in a circle when you're like six years of age and you play that whispers game? You whisper a sentence into your mate's ear, goes all the way around the circle. By the end of the circle, that sentence is completely fucking different, right? You could literally whisper in your mate's ear, I've just seen the cat in the hat. And like by the end of the circle, the last person's like, the cat in the hat abducts children. You're like, what the the fuck just happened so here's from what i know about what happened on that saturday right or even the friday some people have gone as far as saying that this was actually located on the friday this is from my understanding though so, you know don't take it as gospel it just seems a little bit more like logical in that sense apparently his body was located via a drone now we know that a helicopter had to fly in and winch individuals in and out to basically locate and recover jay slater's body so the first thing here is that tells you the difficulty of the area in which which his body is, right? So it seems like using some type of equipment, some individual has located or located remains in which seem to be that of Jay Slater or of an individual located somewhere in the mountains. And due to the fact that it's a really hard area for them to be able to get to, they obviously would have locked off the area and then using their resources, seeing what they could have deployed or seeing what strategies they could have used, for example, in order to get in, locate and recover the body of Jay Slater. It's not like the, the drone's gonna go over and just go, there it is, and they just go, all right, sweet as, and just jump into the middle of nowhere. They have to obviously execute a plan in order to recover this body, which is then on the Monday, the early hours of the Monday morning is when I believe that they then went in and recovered Jay Slater's body. So I'm assuming there's gonna be a massive amount of miscommunication with this. A drone would have been the one that located it. Someone would have reported this back to whoever needed be. They then put together a recovery plan, retrieved the body. But the rumor in this is that someone from the Euros final in Germany sent in a massive tip off, and then they shut down the entire area went in and located Jay's body. Now, from my understanding, it seems a lot more likely that it would have been a drone that would have been able to have done this, as opposed to a random individual from hearsay at the Euro finals. I'm not going to play the whole video, I'm going to skip through just some of the bits and pieces. So when it comes to the alleged tip-off, I, I don't actually believe that, I, not in the slightest. I just believe that that's become hearsay around the area. Rumour is very normal. I mean, again, in the Idaho 4 case, you had leaked text messages from one of the FBI's partners, friends, so-and-so, and still to this day, even though the information has come out not to be correct, people still use that as an indication as to what happened that night, which is fucking wild. Uh, that's been closed now since Saturday to anybody that's not a local. If you haven't got a pass, wow. you were being turned around at the bottom. So he goes on to say that he finds it really weird that the entire area was closed off and that at that time only residents from the area can go in and out of that area. Now there is a main reason for this and it's something that they stated after recovering Jay's body that I think should be a lot more apparent to a hell of a lot more content creators because it seems like they hear it but they just don't listen. Now the police in this investigation after like 13 days said that they were calling off the search on the ground. Turns out after locating Jay's body they actually came forward and said that they never stopped looking for Jay's body. Now in and here he goes on to state that even though he's never been around the area of Masca, as he has no reason to, he then goes on to claim that the police were never looking for Jay Slater, they weren't involved in it, and apparently that is nothing but just consistent news regarding that situation. Now, what the police stated was they discreetly continued their investigation. And the reason why they discreetly continued their investigation is because they didn't want public attention or they didn't want individuals or onlookers going to then locate Jay Slater themselves or individuals that were flying out from like the UK or 
certain parts of the world, go over there to report this case on TikTok and end up like Jay in a situation where they could have potentially got lost or they could have potentially fallen into a chasm, creating more of a scenario for them and having to locate other individuals looking for Jay Slater as they themselves are trying to locate Jay Slater. The best thing for them here is to use their expertise or to use experts in the field of which they can help to locate. The public could only have a certain radius to look for Jay. They could only literally go to certain points to look for Jay before it was nearly impossible for them without having equipment or certain tools, like for example a drone, to be able to fly further down to look through and scour the mountains to be able to locate this body in the first place. The only other thing that these individuals could have done is put themselves in harm's way or in a dangerous position in which they could have potentially fallen or gone off track themselves, which would have just resulted in another individual going missing around that island, causing a bigger problem for the authorities as well as everyone else involved. From the last known witness accounts, from the location in which the individual pinged his phone, they were pretty confident and certain that the individual would be located around the area in which his phone last pinged from, which almost a month later is exactly where Jay Slater's body was located. That's been closed now since Saturday to anybody that's not a local. If you haven't got a pass, wow. you were being turned around at the bottom of those mountain ranges on those roads and sent back into mainland Tenerife. Wow. That's factual. What I also find really weird as well is that here, if you're familiar with this area or you've come out here to maybe be involved in the search that was going on. It's not that strange that certain individuals are being turned down from going in that area. They have stated that the investigation is still open, meaning that there could be potential reasonings or things that they are trying to clarify themselves. Like for example, why the individual is in the area in which he's located. Like that is a huge question. Like why is he going to that point? Why is his body in the area in which it's in? They don't want more individuals going around the area and potentially if there is any evidence or there is any foul play, messing up the evidence that could later on be used by investigators. Like this is obviously a crucial thing. It's, you've got to imagine it's like having a murder scene and investigators being like, nah, don't lock it off. Ah, anyone wants to come around here? Yeah, feel free. So do I find it wild that they've locked down this location in which a body was recovered? Absolutely not. They've got to find breadcrumbs as well as evidence as to why the individual even went to that place in the first place. And that takes investigation and time. And the last thing they want is individuals from TikTok potentially messing up evidence for investigators to later on apprehend. Now, what I've seen since then, since this discovery has been broken in the UK that they found remains in relation to this case mm -hmm. is that there was apparently a shady in the background um, search still being carried out by local authorities here by the mm -hmm. police and there wasn't it didn't happen there was not an ongoing search going on that bit I don't really understand. I don't get how you can confirm that bit. If you have literally stated earlier on in the video that you've never been to that area, have no reasoning in going to that area, you know, whether or not you think it's public knowledge or not, you might have absolutely no idea as to the investigative techniques that certain individuals use or may have used in locating Jay's body. Regardless to how you look at it, whether a cover up or not, they located the body using their techniques. So you can't realistically fault them. It took a long time, but it does. You know, you have to look at like Nicola Bully's case, for example. How close was she the entire time to them? It took like two weeks for them to find her body. They knew the exact location in which she dropped into the water. And still, due to the elements that were at bay, it took them a long time to be able to find her body. You know, when you're going to the mountain range of somewhere like Masca in Tenerife, the vast area that you are asking to be covered to locate a body is fucking white. It's, it's outrageous. It's astounding. So I'm just gonna skip for a little bit. Something isn't right with the way this is being reported, whether it's just a lack of communication or, or holding back knowledge between the police in Tenerife and the police in, in the UK. We don't know, but this... We do know. Yes is pretty much the answer to that. There is no family liaison for the family of Jay Slater, which means that Jay Slater's family are as in the dark as the public as to how they located her son. Like, there is no family liaison to say, this is where investigators are, this is where the police are at at this stage, this is where we believe Jay is at. They will literally tell them next to nothing and just continue with their investigation. And you could see that because due course of Jay's disappearance, the family went through like emotional grief with the police investigation. They went from sad but wanting to help the authorities to angry that they didn't understand what the authorities were doing to now thanking them in some way for locating the body. Like they went through emotional grief. Their grief in their son's disappearance and the fact that they would understand that potentially something bad may have happened to Jay. They actually had an emotional input. It was like relayed into the Spanish authorities as opposed to like the public understanding that, you know, their son is missing. They're going through a 
huge amount of emotions, the psychology and reasoning behind what it is they're going through. You know, they wouldn't have even understood themselves. It's one of those situations that you will understand more later on because you can't see yourself while you are in that state. You have to take a step back in order to analyze it better. And at that point with emotions running consistently high, that is just isn't something that they would be able to process at this point. So if the family aren't getting any information, you're damn sure right that the media aren't either. And one of the things that people need to understand is the independent actually called Sky News out. They were like, yo, you really went in about some of this Jay Slater conspiracy stuff. And it's had a real impact on the case. When it comes to why did the police handle this case discreetly, literally, it took longer to find his body because people hindered and impacted the case in giving false leads about where Jay Slater was. People were literally messaging investigators like, I know where the individual is. I've got evidence that puts this individual on a yacht called Maruba in the middle of nowhere. Investigators then have to go and look that up. And while they're looking that up, it takes away from valuable resources from the area in which they should have been looking regarding Jay Slater's disappearance. So when the individual in this video is like, well, they were never searching around the area. Do you forget in how many tips that they were getting at that point? They might not have been searching around the area at that point because of the fact that they were having to look into so many other leads that people were giving them it hindered them in locating Jay's body quicker. People say things without realizing that they're just walking in a revolving fucking door. Like the media aren't getting information about the case. Look at Madeline McCann's case for fuck's sake. Look at the information that the media put out regarding that case. Still to this day people have multiple questions regarding it due to the fact that half of the techniques and half of the things that the media put out there wasn't even correct. Like some of it is so mad to think that people were taking that as fact, when it wasn't, is absolutely wild. And it's similar here, like there is no information being relayed about what happened regarding the case. There is no information, there is no information about the dead ends that they found from the information passed to them from individuals hindering the case. You know, there's multiple different ways of looking at this. It's like, well, they weren't looking around the area. Well, are you forgetting how many leads that they were getting from investigators or armchair detectives like yourself that are putting out their theories about the case, but then make them have to go down a certain avenue in which takes away delicate time from the case in itself it doesn't line up now there are a thousand and one other conspiracy theories i try not to indulge myself with the ones that are online but the ones that go around here yeah there's some interesting stuff but that's a story for somebody else to dive into i'm only telling you what i factually know what i've seen you see it's worrying when an individual says what i factually know when he also in there like fact checked himself for a couple of things where he said i know that one is factual. It's like, well, the rest of it is hearsay. Like adding that is just, it can be a bit wild because it just adds more fuel to the fire. It creates more speculation. To think that people are still like making content or creating content regarding the fact that this could still be some sort of like mass cover up conspiracy because they aren't privy to information that shouldn't be given to like, what reason are we to be given this information? Like what could, because I want to know it. It's not really enough of an answer. Like if the family aren't getting information about it, understand that there's reasoning behind that. And it's not all potentially dodgy. Like that's one of the things that people need, it's, it's just not. Because these conspiracy theorists have gone from talking about the last known individuals that were with him to now being a like police cover up or conspiracy or they've located the body sooner or this has happened here. Like no, the only thing that is really confusing about Jay Slater's case is yes, the family weren't able to see the body because I'm assuming the state in which the body was in. But what is confusing is one of the things that I mentioned in how they got Jay Slater's fingerprints. Because if the body is in such a bad decomposed state, I did question like, well how, how did you get the fingerprints? And the only answer that I've got to that is if the individual fell with his fist clenched in a position the entire time and potentially kept his arm in a way in which they were able to retrieve it, you've got to remember that there are eight fingers. So there are eight different potential chances for them to be able to get a fingerprint. Hence why they remove the fingers in the first place. It's a grim process. You also have thumbs as well. So there's like two thumbs, eight fingers, 10 shots for them to be able to get a chance of getting his fingerprints. But the question for me there is like 29 days later with the weather, with how the body was located, with the fact the family can't see it. That is one of the questions where I'm a bit like interesting in how they did retrieve it, but they can rehydrate it and use a certain process. 29 days is also a long, it is also a long time. I'm not going to lie there i'm not trying to you know i will say that that is that is strange in itself but there would have also been dna with the body certain other bits and pieces they could have used you know the family are also out there it just would have been a longer process to be able to receive that dna or to be able to get a conclusive match if like i say right in front of them they have 
10 different chances at potentially matching and identifying the body. So yeah, there's just some of it from me. I apologize in advance for the like in-depth analysis of this entire situation. I just kind of wish a little bit more though, people wouldn't put the questions out there as kind of like, I'm not accusing this person of doing it. I'm just saying that a lot of these videos that I'm watching at the moment have this huge clickbait purpose where they're asking the public the question. I feel like it's kind of the content creator's job to analyze, access, gain the information regarding the subject, to then give out their opinion as to what it is that is in the public's eyes the unanswered questions, as opposed to just adding more speculation to it I guess I don't know I just think that for me if you have unanswered questions definitely try and research prior to it to get a bit of information as to what it is that you're sort of delving into and that's not specifically at this person he just used that video he just put his opinion about that video but that's just it for me there's my thoughts on this situation again apologies in advance if this is a long one and if you stay till the end appreciate it drop a like and subscribe as it really helps out the channel hit the post notification bell if you want to stay up to date with anything regarding true crime but if not thanks for watching and have a nice day